Only two more hours, moaned Pino the ragdoll. Oh no, sighed the other toys. Only two more hours. What did he say? Asked Pronto the telephone. He was a little deaf, and one always had to tell him things twice. It's only two more hours before the little boy comes home from kindergarten, explained Cuddly the Cushion. Oh my goodness, sighed Pronto as well. Only two more hours. Oh, come on, you're all acting as if it was the end of the world. It's only the little boy's birthday, said Jumping Jack. Come on, skateboard. Come on, let's ride another round. I don't want to, said Skateboard. What's wrong? asked Pronto again. Roller the skateboard doesn't want to do a round with Jumping Jack, explained Cuddly the Cushion. Oh, you don't say, said Pronto. And you? What's up with you, Pino? Won't you at least play with me? Leave me alone, said Pino. Just look at this big, sad heap. Can't get over the fact that your days as favorite toy are over, jibed Jumping Jack. Game over, peeped Charlie the Chip. What does he mean? asked Pronto. Game over means you finished the game, translated Cuddly the Cushion. Charlie Chip is right for once. It really is game over for Pino. He'll soon end up in the garbage. Now stop annoying him. It's going to be different for all of us after today, not just for Pino. I don't understand different. What do you mean by different? That's the little boy's birthday. So we'll be getting a new toy, Cuddly explained patiently. And then the little boy will only play with his new toy, and we'll be left lying in the corner, feared Skateboard. Why should it be a new toy? Maybe the boy will get something quite different. New shoes or new trousers or something practical, mused the telephone. Rubbish! His aunt will give him something like that. She has no imagination. But his parents will give him something to play with, explained Jumping Jack. <laughs> but why should they when he has us, said the building blocks. He doesn't need any new toys. Exactly. And he especially has me, said Pino. I mean, when I really think about it, I just can't believe that he'd like a new toy better than me. After all, he can't go to sleep without me. <laughs> You're the only one who believes that. He won't even look at you anymore, and his mother will use the opportunity to throw you away. She always said that you were dirty and unhygienic. Game over. Game over. The doorbell rang penetratingly. There he is, whispered Pino. The little boy didn't come near the nursery. He immediately ran into the living room where the birthday table was laid and his parents were waiting for him. The toys also crept quietly into the living room. Oh, oh they sighed. So many presents that could just be things to wear in them. That big package over there, the one with the bow, looks very much like a toy. And truly, as the little boy opened the package, he pulled out a brand new baby doll. That thing's really ugly, cried Skateboard. There's no way he could love that doll, exclaimed Pino and breathed lightly. There's no way of knowing exactly. But there's one thing I can tell you. That thing looks as if it's really going to get on our nerves, added Cuddly the Cushion. Pront had been holding his receiver out at arm's length so as not to miss anything. Get on our nerves? You mean even more than Jumping Jack? He asked aghast. <laughs> and the new toy promptly started screaming. <laughs> so loud that even Jumping Jack, he couldn't stand it. And he crept back into his box. When the little boy finally sat down to cocoa and cake, the toys returned to the nursery. End the alarm, said Charlie Chip. That little monster won't be of any danger to us. His friends nodded relieved, and for the first time that day their good spirits rose and they started to play. 
Pino helped the building blocks to build a wonderful tower. As they finished, the new toy came into the room. Aunt Pamper, which of you is Pino? She shrieked in that horrible baby voice. Everyone looked at Pino. It's you! <laughs> Your Daisy's favorite toys are done. The little boy is only going to worry about me from now on. Pampa started shrieking. <coughs> Shut up, said Jumping Jack, turning on her. Game over, game over, said Charlie Chip. Game over, nothing, laughed Pampa. I'm just getting started. And then knocked the tower over. Ow, ow, cried the building ow. blocks. Ow. That stupid thing destroyed my tower, said Pino. Oh, oh, things could get hot around here, Skateboard started scolding. You stop annoying us at once, or else you're going to get it from us, I'm telling you. I'm a baby, and babies are allowed to do anything. Just you wait and see. <coughs> but at that moment, the little boy came into the nursery, because even on birthdays, there's a time to go to bed. He heard his new toy crying and immediately picked it up. Now, nah, what did I tell you? grinned Pamper at Pino triumphantly. If I was in your position, I'd disappear of my own free will before they threw me out. Without even looking at Pino, his old favorite doll, the little boy took Pamper with him to bed. Pino was left weeping quietly on his own. He didn't even look at me. Ever since I've lived here, I've been allowed to sleep with him every night and now. <laughs> His friends would have loved to join him, but Cuddly Cushion thought it would be better to sympathize with him. I have an idea, called Charlie Chip. Let's look at my game instructions on how to defeat an enemy. We don't need any game instructions for that, exclaimed the building blocks. We'll throw ourselves at its head, all of us at once. And if that doesn't work, I'll ride over it, added Skateboard. I could cut it open with my jumping spring, grinned Jumping Jack happily. <laughs> Or I'll throttle it with my telephone cord. Stop this now, scolded Cuddly. You've all gone crazy. No, first thing in the morning we'll talk to Pamper. He's bound to listen to reason. The toys looked rather skeptical. Pity, murmured Jumping Jack. Pino wasn't convinced either. His tears just couldn't stop falling. But the toys were tired after all the sympathizing, and one by one they fell asleep except for Pino. He felt deserted. That baby's right. No one loves me anymore. I'm just a nuisance. They probably all wish I was no longer here. Pino decided to run away and never return. So he packed his bundle and scrambled out of the window. It was dark outside. Everyone was asleep. Pino was all alone in the street. <gasps> now the others will see how they do without me. The little boy will also see what taking that awful thing to bed will bring him. That eternal noise will get on his nerves. But then there won't be Pino there anymore when he can't sleep or is afraid of the dark. Yes, that's just how it'll be. From thinking so hard and trying to build up his courage, he hadn't noticed where he was going. He kept going deeper into the city. It's mean to throw away a banana peel like that. Hey, look, Mumph, giggled Mum. I think he's just right for us, from the look of him. He should have landed here ages ago. Shall we snatch him, asked Mumph. Pino stared in shock. Stop it. I've done nothing to you. The streetlight leaned forward curiously to see what was happening. Do you want to get him or I? Mumph asked her brother. As much as I hate to say so, I'd love to have him. But I'm only allowed to take recyclable garbage. And this one could definitely not be used again. He belongs to you, sister, said Mumph, generously. OK, then. Come along, little one. Up into the garbage can and off to the garbage disposal, laughed Mumph. 
Now, don't carry on like that. It's very comfortable up here with us, tempted Mumph. And it smells delightful. <laughs> Pino grew paralyzed with shock as he heard the garbage cans talking. And now the rats were also coming closer, while considering whether to start nibbling at him at once or to play a bit of cat and mouse with him. The streetlight took pity on poor Pino. Hurry up, little one, before the rats get their teeth and stuck into you, she called to him. Pino woke from his paralyzed fear and up and ran as fast as his legs would carry him. In his fright, he forgot his bundle. He ran on and on without turning around till his legs couldn't carry him anymore. Gee whiz, where have I landed up? He sobbed and looked around him. They were all right. I really do belong in the garbage. Pino was afraid. Because he'd left his bundle behind, he had nothing to eat or drink. And his stomach's growling got louder and louder, which made things even worse. I want to go home. I want to go back to Cuddly and Pronto and Rolia and Charlie Chip and Jumping Jack. Desperate, he fell onto an old and dilapidated couch that had been put out. If I'd only stayed home, even if the little boy didn't love me as much as before. But the others could still love me. He slowly cried himself to sleep. The next morning, the toys were all rubbing their sleepy eyes. An unknown noise had woken them. Oh, yes, yesterday it had been the little boy's birthday and a new toy had come to join them. You could hear that. Can't you at least shut up in the early morning, said Rolla emphatically. You still haven't caught on. Babies are allowed to cry whenever they want to. <laughs> Grinned Pamper. You're not crying, you're screaming, Mon Pronto. You've even woken me, and I'm relatively hard of hearing. You've got a lot to learn, Pamper, interceded Cuddly. You belong to us now, whether we like it or not. We have to be considerate of one another. I don't have to be considerate to anyone. If I complain about you, the little boy, he'll throw you all out, said Pamper. The others all moaned. Where is Pino? All started looking around. When I feel bad, I creep into my box, and then I close the lid. But as Pino doesn't have a box, maybe he's crept under the bed. Rolla surfed under the bed. He's not there. Hey, you there. Is Pino with you in your box? Jumping Jack asked the building blocks. No, he's not here with us either, they answered. His bundle's gone, said a shocked Charlie Chip. Oh, oh, I think he's run away. A good thing, too. He disturbed me all night long with his crying. That's a joke coming from you, said Pronto. He's only thinly dressed. He'll catch cold, and apart from that, he doesn't know anyone out there, added a troubled cuddly. Now take it slow. Maybe he's hidden himself to make us worry. We should wait a little longer. But waiting was harder than the toys could have imagined, and apart from that, Pamper did not stop getting on their nerves. Six little toys, they were little fools. Pino ran away, and they were only five. Five little toys, they were running. That's enough. Be quiet, you little backbiter. Cuddly went for Pamper furiously, and the cuddly cushion was seldom angry. I've had it, said Rolla finally. I can't stand it anymore just sitting around. I'm going to go out and find Pino. Yes, you're right. We have to find him. The others all agreed. Hey, Charlie Chip, you have experience with chases and adventures, etc. You take over the lead. Charlie Chip was flattered. He could finally show the others what was in him. Glad to, he said. I know all the traps we could fall into on the way and all the tricks to escape from a dangerous situation. Charlie Chip switched himself on. All right, said Cuddly. Then off you go. I'll stay here in case Pino shows up. But Pronto must go with you, so we can keep in contact. 
I have to go along as well. After all, I'm the only one who can scare those criminals that are holding Pino, so... Uh, why holding? Who do you think has captured Pino? asked the building blocks. Could be. You never know, exclaimed Jumping Jack. And what about me, Asperger? You... you stay here, they all cried simultaneously. Your screaming is the last thing we need. Anyway, you're happy that Pino disappeared. You said so yourself. But then I'm here all alone with no one to play with me, complained Pamper. What you really mean is no one to annoy. No, no, you stay here. Pamper started howling. <coughs> but the toys just ignored it. Cuddly the Cushion accompanied his friends to the front door. Hop on, commanded Roller. Pronto, Charlie Chip and Jumpy Jack jumped on and took their places. Be careful, called Cuddly as the train took off. any tracks, said Roller. Where should we start looking? When you run away, you always run straight ahead, said Charlie Chip. So that is what we should do too. arrived at the garbage cans. Do you think they know anything? Jumping Jack asked. In my games, you always have to ask, said Charlie Chip. We have to follow every clue. So let's ask them then, said Roller, and skated to the garbage cans. Hey, you there. Have you seen Pino? Pino? Who could that be? said Mumph. Oh. He's a rather tatty rag doll. Yeah. With a striped cap? Asked Mum. Yes, that's him, cried the excited toys. Pino. Pino's his name, laughed the garbage cans. <laughs> we found him. That makes 867 points, chirped Charlie Chip. They're really looking for him. <laughs> Stop that, and tell us where he went to scold a jumping jack who was beginning to lose patience. But the garbage cans just kept laughing. Once they start, it's hard to stop them, grinned a rat who had been observing everything. And you? Maybe you know where Pino has gone, asked Roller. Mm, no idea, said the rat. Really? I have no idea. He ran away from us. The toys looked helplessly at one another. And now, asked Pronto, we've got to try anyway to reach a solution. That means go right, go left, and straight ahead. Then let's go right first, decided Roller. <laughs> the toys went right, but there was no Pino to be found. Then they went left, still no Pino. Then straight ahead. And while the toys were searching and searching and growing more and more tired, Pino slowly awoke. Pino rubbed his eyes. Oh, wow. Where did oh, I have a bad dream last night? Oh, what happened was, hey, where are you all? He looked around. He was sitting on an old sofa in a junkyard. He hadn't dreamt it. It was all real. And the f 
fear came back with the memory. Oh, my goodness, what a pile of misery we have here. He heard the sudden racket and looked up in front. Actually, this is my apartment. Not very polite of you to stay here overnight without knocking and asking, scolded the garden dwarf. He started crying. Now, now, don't start crying. I can imagine what happened. It was your owner's birthday and you've been thrown away and you don't know where to go. It's always the same. Pino nodded. Come on, tell me about it. Then you'll feel better. You'll see. By the way, my name is Michel. And so Pina told him of his friends and the birthday and the new toy. Oh, oh, that's bad, sighed Michel. I understand you well. My owner threw me away too. But then I settled down to live here in the junkyard. It's not that bad either. Come on, I'll show you everything. If you like it here, you can stay by me. I could use somebody to give me a hand. Slowly Pino stopped sobbing and followed Michel around. He proudly showed him his kingdom. In spite of his problems, Pino found everything exciting. But to live here? Forever? That was something he just couldn't imagine. This may be all right for you, he said to Michel. You're used to living in the open. But what about me? Well, then I don't know either, said Michel. Come on, keep your chin up. Let's think about where else we could put you up. I'm sure to think of something. Sadly, Pino leant against an old car wreck. In the meantime, Pino's friends were more and more desperate. They had searched the whole area, but found no Pino. Game over. What do you mean, game over, asked Roller. Just that. We've lost. Game over. The end. Out. No points. I'll call home, said Pronto. Maybe, maybe Piano just hid away and Cuddly has found him. Have you found him? asked an agitated Cuddly at the other end of the line. No, just as you've asked. We presume that he's not with you either. No, answered Cuddly sadly. He's not here. Oh dear, said Pronto. What do you want to do now? Well, it looks, it looks like we'll have to break off the search. It'll be dark soon, said Pronto wearily. Cuddly sadly hung up the receiver. They didn't find him? Asked Pamper. Cuddly <laughs> shook his head. And now you want to make me feel guilty? Leave me alone. <laughs> The toys got onto the skateboard for the last time and sadly started homeward. Hey, you there! called a rat. You're the ones who were looking for that raggedy bundle? How do you know that? asked Jumping Jack skeptically. Relatives living near the garbage can, said the rat. So what? asked Rolla. They didn't know anything either. But I do. And you would too, if you would only open your ears. <laughs> the toy stared in surprise. <laughs> Having a telephone with you and not hearing anything, wondered the rat. <laughs> well, I'm a little hard of hearing, said Pronto. The rat is right. I can hear him, Pino. Pino! Screamed Jumping Jack loudly and excitedly. Pino! Pino! Hmm, if I'm not mistaken, somebody's calling you, said Michel. Calling me? asked Pina. No, that can't be. Who would be calling me? Pino! 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 Pino!
Roller, Pronto, Charlie, Chip, how did you all get here? Oh, this is great. Now don't start crying again, said Monsieur, obviously touched. Roller jumped happily in the air. They all tumbled around wildly and nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> Do you live here now? Asked Charlie Chip. Looks pretty interesting, stated Jumping Jack, whose head was at the highest extension so that he could check out the area. You could have ended up somewhere worse. Does that mean that you think I should stay here? Do you really don't want me to come back with you? Huh? Oh, but of course, naturally we do. Do you still want to? They asked. I am still loud. But of course, said Charlie Chip happily. That's why we came looking for you. But what about Pamper? Asked Pronto. I'll punch him in the mouth if he screams again or annoys Pino, promised Jumping Jack. <laughs> That's right. Defend yourselves. Don't take anything laying down, said Misha. It's a pity, though, that you're going, Pino. But then... All children have birthdays sometime, and maybe some other thrown-away toy will pass by me. Pronto? We're coming! We have him! called Pronto through the phone to cuddly the cushion. What? All the best, Pino, said Michel. All aboard, ordered Roller. Pino hopped onto the skateboard with the others, and off they went. waiting at the front door. <laughs> Hugged Pino happily. Pamper came up to the others carefully. Hey, Pino, it said in an unusually quiet voice. Leave Pino alone, Jumping Jack spat at him immediately. You know what, Pino said generously to his friends. It's not really Pampa's fault that the little boy takes him to bed with him. I'll just have to get used to the fact that he loves someone else besides me. But, he added and looked mischievously at Pampa, next year there'll be another birthday and we'll be getting a new toy then. You'll see. <laughs>